So, um, so my residents have any quick guesses on what this is? I haven't told them what it is, so. Hyposarcoma. Yeah. The, the center of mass is key, right? Exactly. So this is a retroperitoneal mass. Um, we can see it's pushing the kidney forward. Um, whereas if it was peritoneal, it might be pushing the kidney backwards or in front of the vessels here. Um, so we know that it's definitely retroperitoneal. And so um, liposarcoma is, um, or sarcomas in general are going to be more common in the retroperitoneum. And they, they're really slow growing, which is why they get to be this big. Usually patients just think that they're like getting fatter over time. And it turns out they've got this enormous mass because it's allowed to grow in their retroperitoneum. Um, and then this one in particular, somebody said liposarcoma, um, which is what it is. And it can be a little confusing, but um, you can see that there's fatty components here and down here. And actually even all of this dirty fat here is part of the liposarcoma. Um, but then this solid component here is the very concerning part. So this um, fatty part is the well-differentiated liposarcoma, and then this solid part is concerning for a de-differentiated, um, which is a lot more aggressive than, um, than well-differentiated. Um, and then in this case, a um, couple of other points, uh, we were asked if we thought maybe this could be like a bleeding angiomyolipoma. So when you have like a fatty mass involving or encasing the kidney, sometimes it could either be a liposarcoma or angiomyolipoma. And a sign for an angiomyolipoma is that there would be a notch sign or like a little divot in the kidney, suggesting that it's actually arising from the kidney. Um, and then uh, the other thing is this patient had a pulmonary nodule at their lung base. She's a young woman. Um, I'm not gonna change it to lung windows, but anyway, there was a pulmonary nodule here. We were concerned that that was a MET. So um, in general, well-differentiated liposarcomas don't tend to metastasize. They tend to locally recur. So when they resect these, they basically have to try to keep them completely intact and res resect every little drop of fat um, involved with that, that tumor. And if they leave any little fat behind, then they will recur. Um, but the de-differentiated ones tend to metastasize. So those are the ones that will give you especially lung metastases because um, sarcomas like to go to the lungs in general. They almost always recur. Yeah, there's like an 80% rate of recurrence. And part of that is actually if, um, for example, if they try to debulk the tumor to try to like get access and, you know, they fracture it um, while they're doing the surgery, then, um, then it's going to have some left behind. Um, so you definitely want to go to like a dedicated sarcoma center to get it out. And actually in Europe, so they'll, they'll, um, the other thing is they'll, they'll resect all of these organs that it's interfacing with. So they would definitely resect this kidney, but in Europe, they actually will resect like everything in that side of the retroperitoneum. Huh. So they'll even resect like the aorta and like every organ that it's even remotely close to. That's really um, aggressive. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But it's because of what you're saying, like it recurs and then each time it recurs, it gets more aggressive and then it can um, de-differentiate more. Anyway, um, that was that one.